well, that it takes several different incidents that add up over time. This video was so good that I had to just create a stitch. And if you don't watch Jackie, go back and watch the video that I kind of previewed in this video. The breaking point, the final straw. I just had to share my story because as women, Jackie is right. It does take some small little things that adds up to where we're like, we're done with this situation. We're done with this relationship. We're done with the drama in this marriage or long-term relationship. So years ago, I had a three-year three relationship. And by year, I would say one and a half, two, I knew this was not the relationship for me. But I kept staying for some reason. I kept staying, even though these little incidences kept happening. And so, for example, I have started to... Um, deal with anxiety like out of nowhere and i ended up developing an anxiety disorder and um i would have like panic attacks and when i was with him i would have panic attacks and he wouldn't like help me through them he'll be like get up ain't nothing wrong with you get up i'm not babying you you know which was nuts because if you've ever had a panic attack you know it feels like you're about to die and that's like the worst feeling ever and so to have somebody that you love saying get up ain't nothing wrong with you get up you all right get up whatever it was crazy right so then the i will say the next major like thing that happened incident that happened was he had broke his collarbone right and i was helping his mom asked me to help him um, can he stay with me for a couple of weeks to help him because, you know, her other son was going through some different things. And so, um, he was at my house and I let him have my bed and I used to sleep on the couch. And so one night he was be like, you know, he was rude. He was disrespectful. He was a little a-hole to be honest. And he was, and I was like, okay, you got to get out. Like you got to get your stuff. You got to get out. You know, you're able to drive now. Like you need to get your stuff in your car and get out. Um, I'm done playing nurse. Like, you know. And so then he was like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere, you know? And so I started like, I grabbed his phone. I grabbed his phone so he can get out my bed and get out my house. And he stood up and he stood in front of me. And then, um, you know, he started to like push me a little bit and I tripped over the fan. Okay. And so I tripped over the fan and fell backwards. So then I got back up, like, cause you know, a part of me wanted to like get ready into that fight or flight mode. So I got back up. And I think he could tell that. And so he said, ah, break your face. Like to me, first of all, you only got one arm, good arm, but whatever. And that didn't scare me. That did not truly stop me because he never hit me. He never put his hands on me or anything else. But he did say that and did threaten me. And he looked serious. And later he apologized saying, oh, well, it just felt like I was protecting my shoulder. I was protecting my arm. Seemed like he was going to fight me or something like that. And I'm like, no, it didn't. But anyway, um... That wasn't even the breaking point. That wasn't the final straw. The final straw. Y'all gonna be like, girl, what? The final straw was a couple of months later, I had hired somebody to paint my dining room and living room a different color because he would not do it for me. If it was anybody else in his family, he would have painted it himself, but he wouldn't do it. So I hired somebody off of like Craigslist, I think. And so I said, although he has really great references, this guy does, I don't want to be here by myself. Me and my daughter, can you come over? It was on his day off. I scheduled it on his day off. He had nothing else to do, anything like that. Can you come over and hang out with us for a couple of hours while they paint? And, you know, just to have a male presence here. He's like, no, I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like wasting my Saturday on that type of thing. And I was like, I don't know these people. Like, can you just come over and hang out? Like, I kept asking him. And he's like, no, no, I'm not coming. So then I said, that's funny because if it was like somebody in your family, like your mom or your aunt or one of your brothers or something like that, you would have done it. He yelled in that phone and said, you're not my family. We've been together for three years. You're not my family. That was my breaking point. That was my final straw. Like I literally broke up with him, never went back. I mean, he tried to propose to me, bring a ring, cry on my phone for months later. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So it's interesting what our final straws are and what what like is that tipping point that breaking point that we cannot go back for him to say again i went through him not supporting me and at my lowest when i started developing anxi an anxiety and panic attack disorder out of nowhere i didn't even have the language on what that was at the time to him dang near threatening me threatening saying he was gonna fight me 
to him saying he ain't my family and he didn't show up for me girl that was it that was it so that's so interesting that jackie pointed that out that it takes like these little things over time for us to be done and that final straw be so small but we be like i'm out so i want you to tell me in the comments what is your what was your breaking point in a relationship what was your final straw because i already know we all have that story we all have that final straw and that breaking point as women see you in the comments